It's Monday, April 25, and time for your Barbados Today Evening News Update. Thousands of jobs for Barbadians with one of the world's major cruise lines will open up within the next four months. Today, Tourism Minister Senator Lisa Cummins and the Chief Executive Officer of Royal Caribbean, Michael Bailey, signed a Memorandum of Cooperation to facilitate the move on the sidelines of the Sea Trade Cruise Global Conference in Miami. A wide range of jobs are available under the agreement. And we're talking here about our creatives, our entertainers, photographers, uh, persons who work in hotel and hospitality management. And if we know one thing about Barbados is that Barbados is well known for our hospitality. We are warm, especially when it comes to our cruise partners. And we're looking forward to this new partnership with Royal Caribbean, getting more Barbadians employed on board cruise ships, traveling the world and taking Barbados and our hospitality with it and working with you to develop even even more opportunities. Chief Executive Officer Royal Caribbean Michael Bailey highlighted the strong relationship between his company and Barbados, reflecting on the island's general assistance during the height of the COVID-19 pandemic when thousands of his employees were stranded at sea. It was incredibly supportive and helpful in allowing Royal Caribbean and other cruise companies to bring their ships to Bridgetown and to arrange charter flights literally to all over the world and we got, I think, maybe 20,000 of our crew off our ships in Barbados, and we got them home, and it would not have been possible if not for the cooperation of the people of Barbados. So thank you for that. I feel quite emotional, actually, speaking about that. The chairman of the Barbados Tourism and Marketing Inc., Shelley Williams, is excited about the new opportunities, which she believes will yield significant benefits for the island. The new tourism authority and the new BTMI, and under our mandate of our, our minister, is to also talk about opportunity for our people within the sectors. And so it was so important that we... Um, met with you and you readily agreed because of our great relationship and I thank you so much for doing it. And I heard you talk about um, and the minister talk about the musicians and the creatives, but you didn't stop there. We have, when I looked at the list of uh, jobs that will be available to our Barbadians, we are talking about from engineering to uh, carpenters to plumbers to electricians to seamen and people in sports, um, youth. There's a cross-section. That is the largest cross-section I have ever seen. And I'm so excited to be on board. And, um, and I think you are now going to lead the way for other discussions from other cruise lines for us to have this kind of relationship. Meanwhile, the tourism minister also announced that Barbados is moving its primary cruise operations out of Bridgetown and into Miami as local stakeholders attempt to deepen relations with key partners. Senator Cummins told today's press conference the new office should be operational by late summer. So all of the relationships with the cruise lines and partners like Michael and Royal Caribbean will be anchored out of our Miami office with support from our Barbados office so that we're constantly in recruiting mode, we're constantly in training mode, we're constantly in developmental mode, and that we're working with our partners on the ground in Barbados to bring them live and direct to our partners here in Miami. And that, of course, we're going to be ensuring that the Barbadian brand of hospitality is world class, it is available, and that people are going to be able to see Destination Barbados through our people, not just our people on island, but our people who will be working on board the ships, who will then be able to tell the story of who we are as Barbadians while earning their livelihoods. And that's a balance that we in the tourism team are very committed to. In other news this Monday, government has signaled its strong support for children's advocate Faith Marshall Harris to be re-elected to the United Nations Committee on the Rights of the Child. Minister of People Empowerment and Elder Affairs Kurt Humphrey today underscored the significant work done by the children's advocate over the years and urged members of the diplomatic corps to encourage their nations to also lend their support. He made these comments during a meeting at the Lloyd Erskine Sandiford Centre this afternoon with Mrs. Marshall Harris, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Simon Rudder, and members of the Diplomatic Corps. Every confidence, every confidence, that if re-elected, Mrs. Marshall Harris will continue to serve on the committee with great distinction. Rest assured 
that she will fiercely defend the rights and interests of children all over the world. She will further ensure that the committee undertakes all requisite activities to ensure that children's rights are upheld and are in sync with the relevant SDG goals, the Sustainable Development Goals, such as Goal 1, relating to the end of poverty, Goal 4, relating to quality education, and Goal 5, which is very important, relating to gender equality and empowering women and girls. Mrs. Marshall Harris told the gathering she is seeking re-election to complete urgent tasks on behalf of the world's children, which were affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. I really want a number of issues properly ventilated within that committee. I want to see a number of um, initiatives uh, with the state parties. There are a number of things that we need to get done for children globally, children everywhere. And therefore, um, I need a little more time to do it in because I lost two years to COVID-19 and we need to get back to, to um, the work we were doing. In today's COVID-19 update, Barbados recorded 323 new cases of the viral illness, 151 males and 172 females tested positive from the 1,092 tests conducted by the Best of Santos Public Health Laboratory on Sunday. Of the positive cases, 63 persons were under the age of 18 and 260 were 18 years and older. There were 89 people in isolation facilities, while 3,136 were in home isolation. An unvaccinated 55-year-old man died from the viral illness on Sunday. The death toll now stands at 390. There's regional and international news after this short break. More oxygen means more energy means more adventure. Cure Oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Cure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water. Caribbean Cool is a refreshing juice drink that contains 100% vitamin C that you can enjoy any time of the day. It has a refreshingly awesome range of Caribbean flavors. Moby, orange, fruit punch, pineapple, sorrel, and pineapple coconut. Suitable for any occasion. Caribbean Cool. To regional developments in Guyana, students return to face-to-face -to -face classes today after being away for more than two years due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Chief Education Officer Dr. Marcel Hudson says the ministry is now on high alert for children who might have dropped out of school. We get the details from Newsroom Guyana. For the national grade 6 um, students that we were looking for in particular because we were able to um, recognize how many of them have, would have been missing as a result of the mock examination and out of some 1400 we found half of them but we still we will know now how many because that number could very well go up we don't know um, but now they have to come to school we will now get a clear sense as to you know the number of students that that are missing if any at all at this time that was dr marshall hudson the chief education officer after more than two years of school's closure a phase return to full face-to-face -face classes started on monday with some learners returning to in-person classes and Dr. Hudson told reporters at Queen's College that the ministry is on high alert for children who might have dropped out of school. This comes as there have been fears that hundreds of children dropped out of schools during the extended closure due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Meanwhile, learners are returning amid an ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, and the CEO emphasized that all schools are required to adhere to key COVID-19 guidelines. Schools still have the... Um they're still required to wear the face mask. If you take a look inside, you'll see all of them in their face mask. They still will be um, washing their hands and using sanitizers and so on. Um, and so all necessary precautions still will be made in terms, of, um, in terms of the safety and security of our students. A document has already been sent out to schools. Um, saying to them what we expect in terms of safety. On the international front, congratulations are flooding in from across Europe and the world as French President Emmanuel Macron is re-elected to office. He won 58% of the vote compared with 41% for far-right candidate Marine Le Pen.
But as we hear in this report from Euronews, Macron faced many challenges ahead as he seeks to govern a divided country. French President Emmanuel Macron has pledged to unite France after a decisive victory against the nationalist far right. The country's interior ministry predicted the 44-year-old secured a majority with 58.5 to 41.1 percent of the vote. He praised the electorate who gave him five more years at the Elysee Palace. Finally, I speak to all those who voted for Madame Le Pen who are disappointed this evening. No, don't poo anybody. I have always asked you not to boo. Because from now, I'm no longer a candidate on one side, but the president of all. The pen conceded defeat, although didn't congratulate Macron. However, the 53-year-old claimed Sunday's election a success after winning more than 12 million votes with 43 percent. She vowed to continue the political fight and never abandon France. With more than 43% of the vote, tonight's results is in itself a brilliant victory. Tonight we launched the great electoral battle of the legislative elections. I will lead this battle alongside Jordan Bardella, with all those who had the courage to oppose Emmanuel Macron in the second round. In short, with all those who have the nation at heart. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.